Hi, and welcome back to The Secret Life of Parkinson's. I'm Jessica Krauser, and I'm with Dr. Patel. Hello. And Brian Hi. Baker. <laughs> you, you can confuse Steve now. I confuse Steve. I'm sorry. That's okay. But no, we have Dr. Patel with us again. Yeah, he's, We're both he's super kicked excited. Me out of my seat. He's kicked you out because he's got a lot of things to say. I know. We have a lot of questions for him. Yeah. Um, but thank you so much for coming. Of course, my pleasure. I really appreciate I it. I always enjoy coming. Thank we you. are uh, we're gonna jump right in. We have um, uh, one topic in particular that people have asked about, and there's a couple things that we'll probably build in this. But I actually didn't know what this was until just earlier when you mentioned what it what the the what the definition of it is. But there's Parkinson's disease, and then there's it can mask as other things as well. So MSA is one of them. And mm -hmm. what's that, what does MSA stand for again? So MSA stands for multiple systems atrophy. Okay, so talk about the differences between Parkinson's disease and people with MSA. Right. So it's, whenever I'm diagnosing a patient with Parkinson's, I always tell them, you know, nobody can ever say you 100% have Parkinson's disease unless they cut open your brain, slice it into pieces, look under a microscope. Mm -hmm. And we're not going to do that. Right. So there are lots of things that could look, act, and mimic like Parkinson's, but it's not Parkinson's itself, MSA being one of them. MSA is a, it's multiple system atrophy. It is what we call like an alpha synucleinopathy. In other words, it's, it's that same abnormal protein that um, can affect that potentially is what the cause of Parkinson's is. It's similar in uh, MSA patients, but it affects different parts of the body and it causes them to have different types of symptoms, although it may mimic Parkinson's. So um, most patients with, with MSA, what you would notice is that, so our, our autonomic nervous system, which is part of our nervous system that helps regulate things like your blood pressure, your heart rate, um, your bowel movements, drooling, things like that, mm -hmm. um, it, it helps regulate that. And it causes, MSA specifically will have this, uh, their autonomic nervous system will be very, very, affected and in more affected than a parkinson patient so msa patients they're they they they're more affected by this autonomic their autonomic nervous system autonomic is more affected system. more affected okay. yeah it, it 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 causes the autonomic nervous system to kind of start failing and parkinson which patients, is what again the blood pressure blood pressure bowel movements um drooling sweating uh swallowing that sort of okay. stuff uh, so MSA patients uh, and Parkinson patients can have these things. It's part of the non-motor features of Parkinson's. Mm -hmm. uh, they could have drooling. They could have dizziness. They could have, con and you know, most patients have constipation. Yeah. That's all part of Parkinson's as well. But an MSA patient, what you would likely notice is that that stuff is much more productive. That's what's affecting them much more. And even though you're trying to, you although currently to date. There's no actual diagnostic test to differentiate between the two. Uh, you can, uh, if you may start thinking about MSA, if usually in the first few years of diagnosis, they start really exhibiting these symptoms more, or you put them on carbidopa levodopa, which, you know, one of the side effects of carbidopa levodopa is that it could drop your blood pressure. Uh, and these patients, even on very, very low doses, that will impact them much greater hmm. uh, than a Parkinson patient would. Uh, there are certain MRI findings to help differentiate between the two. It's called uh, the hot cross bun sign. So you think of like a hot cross bun. And at the back of the braid, uh, down in the in the medulla and pons area, you could see on an MRI, uh, there actually is like a, like it looks like a hot cross bun, like okay. a cross. Uh, and if you see that on imaging, and it's pretty, and along taking that along with, the clinical features of what mm -hmm. you're seeing in the patient, you could kind of say, okay, maybe this is more MSA. There are studies going on currently looking at different uh, potential blood markers and spinal fluid markers that we hope could help differentiate between the two. Yeah, because what about the one that we just learned about this year of this, the, um, I know it's just a spinal fluid right now that they can almost determine if it's Parkinson's that you have or not. Exactly. Does that differentiate between MSA and Parkinson's? Because it helps diagnose Parkinson's. So, so, so if somebody say, like so if somebody thought that they had Parkinson's, but they're starting to maybe go more towards the side of like, having the MSA symptoms, and they got this spinal fluid test, mm -hmm. and it showed 
like nothing was Parkinson's, like that's how it would show up if they were truly MSA? Exactly. Okay. Right. Oh, that's interesting. Um, and then they would have, you know, and, and you still, you know, ultimately, like, you know, you tell your patients, look, we're still going to manage you the same way. We're, we're going to try. You try carbidoplevidopa. If you start noticing, you know, they're having more side effect than benefit, okay, you could potentially wear off. There are certain MSA patients, subtypes of MSA patients that still get response from levodopa. And so they're still on minimal dosing. It's just you're you're going to be mon monitoring them more carefully with the potential that they may have more, uh, eventually have more side effect than benefit. And you may need to take them off uh, the medicine. Like what other side effects would an MSA um, patient have on carbidopa levodopa besides the blood pressure? Mainly the blood pressure. Okay. Yeah, mainly the blood pressure. But like it becomes very significant. Like my MSA patients, you know, their blood pressure will drop to like, you know, 40 over 20, like, wow, yeah, drastic. It, it's huge. Wow. And, and, and some of them are like, yeah. And, and of course the, the biggest thing is they, they pass out, mm -hmm. um, and could potentially hurt themselves. So, mm -hmm. so you have to be very, very cautious, uh, using, uh, levodopa and most of those patients will not respond. They won't get the motor benefits of, of levodopa and they will only experience the potential side effect mm. and and so you wouldn't want to give it to them. Uh, do MSA patients have the the motor issues that Parkinson's mm -hmm. patients do? They So they say they have all yep, that too? Yep, they could have tremor, they could have slowness, stiffness, that's, mm. that's all part of it. It's just this component of the nervous stronger. system is stronger, mm -hmm. is more affected. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. I've never even yes. heard of it. The joys of uh, Parkinsonisms. Yes. Yeah, and in yeah. Parkinson patients, again, they could have autonomic dysfunction. They could have their blood pressure dropping and things like that. And a lot of Parkinson patients, you know, they may be diagnosed with high blood pressure before they were diagnosed with Parkinson's, and they're on blood pressure meds. And mm -hmm. so when this starts happening, you know, step one is to be like, well, maybe you don't need your blood pressure pill anymore because now your Parkinson's or your Parkinson's meds is sort of taking care of the blood pressure for you. And so you may you know, need to talk to your primary doctor about coming off your blood pressure pills because now you're starting to experience some, you know, if you stand up too quickly, you get really lightheaded. Um, that's happening a little bit more frequently. And I have patients, you know, take your blood pressure when you're seated and then stand up and take it again. If your top number is dropping by more than 20 points, that's an indication that you have what we call orthostatic hypotension, where your blood pressure drops when you stand up. Mm -hmm. And if that's happening, then we, you know, we need to start making adjustments. You don't want to, you want to be careful of going up on giving a more carbidopa levodopa because this could potentially get worse. Um, so you want to stabilize the blood pressure first before you give that patient more levodopa. Um, and there are multiple different there. Op medication options to help stabilize that. Their non-medication options mm -hmm. work actually probably even a little bit better. There, if you get, you know, most people say get compression stockings, but actually probably what you really want is more of an abdominal binder. Hmm. So if you go to a medical supply store and you get an abdominal binder, so you tighten this. So if you tighten this, it increases pressure here, increases pressure here, and then it lets blood flow get to the brain better. So it helps regulate the uh, blood pressure much better. Interesting. So yeah, abdominal binders are like. There's so much to think about. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, honestly, I guess it was overwhelming. Yeah, a it lot is of overwhelming. It's over and around. Right. <laughs> well, so and I'm 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 not looking at my phone to be to be rude. There's actually questions on here, uh -huh. um, but so, um, the one who asked me about the um, you know is there anything patients can be doing to counter some of the autonomic dysfunctions that Parkinson's causes? You know, thinking the hypotension, heart rate, sweating type issues, et cetera. She for sure I has Parkinson's, she had the she has a gene, she mm -hmm. carries the gene for it. So if she's experiencing those symptoms, what does that mean like again again, these symptoms can still be part of Parkinson's. Okay. So it's not like park if you have these symptoms you don't have Parkinson's. It's all part of Parkinson's as well. Um, and she just may be more sensitive to it. And so you know, step one is, is these things. So if she's experiencing blood pressure issues, things like that, look at her medication list, make mm -hmm. sure that there isn't anything that also is contributing, uh, you know, for male patients, if they have prostate issues, a lot of the prostate meds also drop your blood pressure. And so there's mm -hmm. multiple factors that could be contributing, um, you know, drooling. We've talked about this before. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's also this autonomic dysfunction. That's part of it. And we do injections of botulinum toxin for drooling, which can help. 
uh, the binder can help significantly to help regulate blood pressure and heart rate. Um, if you're starting to experience swallowing issues, it's important to get swallow testing done uh, to make sure, because you don't want to be silently aspirating and that could cause mm -hmm. more problems. Um, so if you're experiencing that, to get evaluated by speech therapists and, and get swallow, swallowing testing done. Does DBS, like, does that ha help any, I don't know, I cannot say, auto <laughs> Autonomic. Autonomic. Yeah. Does DBS help with any of that? No. Okay. And DBS, keep in mind, it's it's the main role for DBS is to give you whatever benefits you get from levodopa. So the, if there are patients who mm -hmm. notice that, hey, when they're wearing off, they're sweating. Mm -hmm. When they're wearing off, they're drooling. And then they take the levodopa and that stuff stops. Mm -hmm. Then yes. Okay. Right, because technically mm -hmm. levodopa is treating those symptoms for them. Mm -hmm. But regardless of how much, when, or where you are in your levodopa during the day, you're drooling, you're dropping your blood pressure, your heart rate, you're sweating, whatnot. No, it's not going to, because levodopa doesn't impact that. Hmm. Interesting. Um. Okay. <laughs> your your tear drops again. <laughs> There was the other, what was the other thing with MSA that was connected that we were talking about? Um, there are recent, there are uh, skin biopsy testing mm -hmm. that you could, uh, the certain centers are doing that could potentially help differentiate uh, Parkinson's from, from uh, MSA or um, another one is what we call progressive supernuclear palsy. That's another Parkinson-like condition that uh, is different than What's the other called? two. Uh, it's called PSP, okay. which is progressive supranuclear palsy. Um, they have, you know, they are they're a group that has a totally different constellation of symptoms uh, that's unrelated to. They look very much Parkinsonian, have similar Parkinson-like things, but they tend to fall fall backwards. Primarily fall backwards. They fall very frequently. Um, they also may not respond to levodopa. Most of them eventually, if they do respond initially, they'll stop responding. Um, do they fall backwards like right like initially or is it after mm -hmm. they've okay no yeah they'll come to you saying you know they're falling frequently falling. and every time they fall it's usually predominantly backwards hmm. okay wow that is really interesting i didn't know that like because there's and these aren't just these are just two of the are they all called parkinsonism so there's this neurodegenerative Parkinsonisms, and there are five in total. So there's Parkinson's disease, MSA, PSP, Lewy body disease, mm -hmm. and cortical basilar degeneration. What was the last one? Cortical basilar degeneration. What's so that? CBD. That's actually where actually one part of your brain starts atrophying, and it's, they start looking like Parkinson's, uh, but half of their body uh, will start having a lot more dystonia is a lot more tightness and they'll stay contracted and they start getting cortical features of the brain meaning they'll start having like speech issues like aphasia that they can't really speak um hmm. sensory issues uh and it's predominantly just one half of the body it's one half of the brain that's starting to de degenerate um and uh so and they these other ones that are not parkinson's disease itself unfortunately there is no specific treatments for the other ones they tend to have a faster progression mm -hmm. um and um and because there's there's no actual specific treatment like you know we have levodopa for our parkinson's disease we don't have those specific things for those other conditions mm -hmm. right now um so it makes it um it's they're unfortunate yeah diseases oh I actually do have other um, topics and questions, but mm -hmm. I'd like to almost let's 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 take a short break. Steve, can we take a break and we'll like dive back in? We'll dive back in yeah. in just a moment. 